them to receive. Again, do you hear Jesus Christ calling himself the Son of God? In another place, Jesus Christ said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. He's talking about manna now. But my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. Again, do you hear Jesus? He's calling himself the Son of God. In another place, Jesus said, Therefore I say unto you that no man can come to me except it were given of him by my Father. Do you hear that? Jesus is saying nobody can come to him except his Father. Jesus is calling God his Father. Amen. Do you hear that? In another place, Jesus says that you neither know me nor my Father. If you had known me, you would have known my Father. You and I know full well that Jesus, as he says, my Father is not referring to Joseph. He is referring to God as his Father. So you see, these are just a few examples. I mean, I could go for a long while, giving you evidence, giving you first-hand witness about Jesus Christ when Jesus called God his Father. So again, anybody can form an opinion about anybody. But what matters is what you say about yourself. You can form an opinion about me. What matters is what I say about myself. You can form an opinion about Jesus Christ. What matters is what Jesus Christ said about himself. I can form an opinion about you. But what matters is what you say about yourself. If you tell me that your name is John, what right do I have to say, yes, you've told me that your name is John, but I believe that your name is Matthew. So just because I believe whatever I want to believe, does it mean that it becomes the truth? Because you know and I know it is very, very possible to believe a lie. I'll give you another one. Jesus Christ talking about the manner of death he was going to die. He said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, because lifting up in that language means to be put to death. He said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. Again, do you hear Jesus? He is calling Himself the Son of God. And you know, I am reading from the book of John. This man called John was one of Jesus' disciples. This man called John traveled with Jesus. He ate with Jesus. He preached with Jesus. Where Jesus lived, this man lived. Where Jesus ate, this man ate. This man traveled with Jesus. This man laughed and cried with Jesus. This man prayed and read the scriptures with Jesus. This disciple called John. account of what Jesus said and did is not second-hand information. This is something that he, John, saw for himself. This is something that John, as one of the disciples of Jesus Christ, experienced. Did you know that? one of the disciples of Jesus Christ. John was one of those men that traveled and preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what he said about Jesus is what he heard Jesus Christ himself say. Not something that somebody 600 years down the line would mischievously postulate. Jesus Christ called himself the Son of God. what he said. He said, I am the Son of God. And I can give you even more and more scriptures that will relate to, to you that Jesus Christ called himself the Son of God. There are loads of examples in this year Bible that will show you that Jesus Christ said, 
I am the son of God. So you see, you can again form your opinion, and your opinion is your opinion. It is nothing but your opinion. Just because you had an opinion doesn't mean that your opinion becomes the truth. Because if I ask you your name and you tell me that your name is Michael, what right do I have to turn around and say, okay, yes, you've told me your name is Michael, but I'm going to believe that your name is Jacaranda. Your name doesn't become Jacaranda because I've said it. Your name remains Michael despite what I want to believe. So Jesus Christ remains the Son of God despite what opinions people, what opinions people form against him. Jesus will remain the Son of God despite some people mischievously postulating that Jesus Christ was nothing but just a prophet. The Bible makes it very clear. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and that Word was God. And Jesus Christ is God incarnate. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. God himself took his bones and blood and came down in the person of Jesus Christ. That's what God did. So, anybody can form an opinion. I can form an opinion about you. You can form an opinion about me. But what matters is what I say about myself. So when Jesus said, I am the son of God, it doesn't matter what opinion people form, right? <laughs> it really doesn't matter what you want to think about the man. What matters is what the man said about himself. Do you think that Jesus Christ, as powerful as he was, was not able to speak for himself? The man that walked on the water? Do you think that that man is not powerful enough to speak for himself? The man who opened up blind eyes? Do you think that he cannot speak for himself? The man that cast out demons out of people? Do you think that he cannot speak for himself? Of course Jesus Christ can speak for himself. And when Jesus spoke for himself, he said, I am the son of the living God. That's what Jesus said. And when you believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God, you also will have a relationship with this God. You also will have a relationship with God. The moment you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, because that's what he said about himself, you also will have a relationship with God. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead, you have a relationship with God. Do you know the way to connect with God? This powerful God, this God who's created everything that there is, this powerful God who's created everything, do you know how to connect with God? If you say it with your own mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, that particular moment, you've established a relationship with God. It's as simple and as easy as that. The moment you say it with your own mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, that very same moment, you establish a relationship with God. I mean, you try it. When you get home, in your own private, in your own private moment, just say it with your own mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. See what happens. Just say it with your own mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead. See what happens. You will come back and you will tell me that something happened within you. You will come back and you will tell me that your spirit man came alive. You will come back and you will tell me that you feel different. Only by saying it with your own mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You try it. In, in the privacy of your own home. Without anybody looking. Without anybody watching. Just say it with your own mouth. Jesus is the Son of God. That statement alone will establish a relationship with God. That statement alone, just saying with your mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. Just saying that, just confessing that. That's all it takes to have a relationship with the true and believing God. That's all it takes to find yourself in the presence of God. 
You know, because as people, we like religion so much. We like to do things thinking that when we do these things, we, we are in the presence of God. Thinking that when we've done these things, we are justified before God. I have a question for you. How many dishes does your son have to wash before you can tell your son that you love him? How much housework does your child have to do before you can tell your child that you love them? Obviously none. You love them already anyway. And that's the very same thing with God. Before we were created, God loved you. Before the earth was formed, God knew about you. God knew you by name. God knew you by date of birth. God knew you by every address you've ever lived. Before the world was created, God knew you already. He knows the number of the hairs on your head. Anything that can be known about you, God knows it. He knew you before he created you. Before you, you were even born, God had already decided that you were going to be born and God had already decided that he was going to love you. Did you know that? And I will give you an, an illustration. You know you ladies, if there are any mothers here, if you're a mother, if you're a mother, right? The moment you knew you were pregnant, the moment you knew you were going to have a baby, you fell in love with that baby. The moment you knew that, oh, conception, the moment you knew that you were going to have a baby, you loved your baby before the baby was born, before the baby could talk, before the baby could cry, before the baby could walk, before the baby learned to run, before the baby learned to tell any jokes. The day you knew you were pregnant, you fell in love with your baby. Before the baby could do anything to deserve your love, you loved that baby. And it's the same thing with God and you. God loves you before you were even born. God loved you before you were created. Before the world was created, God had already decided on you that he was going to love you. God's got nothing but love for you, you know. And some of you people know that the reason why you are alive today, the reason why you came out of that accident is because God loved you. The reason why you nearly all did but didn't all do is because God loves you. The reason why you're where you are right now, you know you don't deserve it, but you know that it's because God loves you. It's because God loved you before you were even born. He knew about you before the world was created, and God had already decided to love you. Just like when a woman is pregnant, she falls in love with the baby, before the baby does anything deserving love, the mother already loves the baby. And this is the very same thing with God and you. So we don't have to do religion. There's absolutely no good works that you can do that can justify you before God. There's no amount of religion that you can perform that will take away your sin. There's no amount of being a nice guy that you can do that can justify you before God. The only one thing that justifies humanity before God is the blood of Jesus Christ. The difference between heaven and hell is the blood of Jesus Christ. It's because Jesus Christ himself said it. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. It's because Jesus Christ himself said it. Jesus said with his own mouth that I am the resurrection and the life. Did you know that Jesus Christ is the only person who defeated the power of the grave? Every other single person came, they died, they're still in the grave today because they were a sinner just like you and me. It doesn't matter what their name is. As long as a person was born of a man and woman, the grave has the legal right to put them in that grave. Did you know that? As long as you are born of a man and a woman, when you die, the grave has the legal right to keep you in that grave. Because the power of the grave is in the sin of humanity. 
because there in the garden of Eden, Adam says to God says to Adam and Eve, the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. What God was saying to Adam and Eve was, I am all the knowledge you need. Because it's one thing to have the knowledge of good and evil. It's another thing to shine away the evil and do the good. And when I look around, when you look at humanity, you see a humanity that wants to do good, but they don't have the power, we don't have the power to do good. You see a humanity that don't want to do evil, but falls into that evil over and over again. This is why a drug addict is a drug addict. It's not that the drug addict wants to be a drug addict, but the drug addict doesn't have the power to shun away evil and to do the good. Because they in the Garden of Eden, God says to Adam and Eve, Jesus Christ is the only knowledge you need. You don't need the knowledge of good and evil. You need to know the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because the moment you know the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the moment you have the knowledge of Jesus, you know eternal life. The day you know the Jesus Christ, you know inner peace. The day you know Jesus Christ, you know true joy and happiness. The day you know Jesus Christ, you know the forgiveness of sin. The day you know Jesus Christ, you know what it means to be in a relationship with the true and the living God. The day you know Jesus Christ, you know what it means to have a relationship with God. So Jesus Christ is coming down every day into the Garden of Eden to talk to Adam and Eve. But Adam and Eve eventually fell for the sin and the lies and the deception of Satan. They ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the day they did that, they removed themselves away from the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The day Adam and Eve removed themselves away from the knowledge of Jesus Christ, their relationship with God died instantly. And they died in the spirit. Did you know that you're three in one? The God who made you is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You yourself as a human being, you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. And when God made you, he made you in his image, he made you in, uh, in his likeness, and he made you for dominion. Do you see that? God the three in one made you as a three in one. But the day that Adam and Eve decided to rebel against the love of God, their spiritual man died instantly. The God that they could hear every day, they can no longer hear that God anymore. The God that they could relate to every day, they can't talk to that God anymore. Eventually, you see Adam and Eve being led out of the Garden of Eden. They can no longer hear God, they can no longer talk to God, they can no longer fellowship with God, they can no longer connect with God, they can no longer interact with God. They are taken out of the presence of God. And that's what happens when humanity moves away from the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The day you reject the knowledge of Jesus Christ is the day your relationship with the true and believing God dies. So you see, Adam and Eve, even though they were physically alive, spiritually they were dead. Even though they were walking about, they were still doing what they needed to do, but spiritually they were dead. They were walking physically, but spiritually they were dead in the spirit, they were dead on the inside. And I see that every day in this our here humanity, you see people walking about, you know, as empty shells with nothing of substance on the inside. Yeah, this is why there's suicide in the world, because people are walking about as empty shells with nothing of substance on the inside. People are walking about as empty shells with no meaning, no meaning of life on the inside. Did you know that the meaning of life is a person? The meaning of life is not a philosophy. The meaning of life is not a school of thought. The meaning of life is a person and his name is Jesus Christ. So Adam and Eve now find themselves with sin in their lives and by sin also came death. You know, Adam and Eve give birth to two boys, Cain and Abel. And you see Cain and Abel killing themselves. Why are Cain and Abel killing themselves? Because they are born of spiritually dead parents. That which is spiritually dead is going to reproduce that which is spiritually dead. A smith is going to give birth to a smith. An Abdul is going to give birth to an Abdul. An Adam is going to give birth to an Adam. A person who's spiritually dead is going to give birth to a person who's spiritually dead. That's how it works. That is the law of reproduction. But I thank God that Jesus came. Because when Jesus Christ came, he came to shed his blood on that cross. When Jesus Christ came, he came to die on that cross. 
to pay the price for the sin of humanity and Jesus was put in that grave for three days and now on the third day you see Jesus Christ being risen from the dead did you know that you could close the Bible and go into secular history you still hear them talking about the resurrection of Jesus you can go to the secular historians at the time of Jesus you still hear them talking about the resurrection of Jesus because the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a historical fact Jesus Christ was a person who lived in time and history. Jesus Christ actually died on that cross. He was on that cross for a good six hours. They crucified Jesus at nine in the morning. By three in the afternoon, Jesus is still on the cross. He's dripping every drop of blood in his body for you. And then after that, they put him in a grave. And he's in that grave for three hours. Come day three, Jesus is risen from the dead. When Jesus Christ was risen from the dead, he spent a good 40 days showing himself to his disciples and day 40 he is ascended and is seated at the right hand side of the Father. Did you know that when Jesus Christ had finished showing himself to his disciples, he was ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand side of the Father right now? Did you know that? Right now as we speak, if you want Jesus' address, I have it, I can give it to you. Jesus' address is the right hand of God. That's where Jesus is at right now. And after he's sitting down on the right hand side of the Father, he sent of his Holy Spirit to the church. Have you ever noticed that the church is the only place where you hear about the pouring out of the Spirit of God? There's no other faith or religion that has ever received the Holy Spirit but the church. No other religion or faith claims to have received the Holy Spirit but the church. The Spirit of God has been poured out on the church. Did you know that there is a day coming? This day is called the day of judgment. And on this day everybody comes before God. And every single one of us has to give an account on how we lived our lives. Did you know that every person that dies, as they are lowering your body into the ground, as they are signing your death certificate, as they are performing funeral rites, your soul appears before God. Did you know that? Do you know that the, the, when you die and they put you in a grave, that's not the end of it. That's the beginning of eternity. The moment they put your body in a grave, the moment you die, as you're breathing your last, your soul finds itself before the true and the living God. And when you come before God, God has one question for you. And the question that God will ask you is, what did you do with my son Jesus? Did you know that the moment you die and come before God, before God the Father says anything, he looks at the Son, he looks at Jesus Christ first before he says anything. And Jesus Christ at that moment will either confess you or deny you. Jesus said, those that confess me before men, I will confess them before my Father which is in heaven. Those that deny me before men, I will deny them before my Father which is in heaven. God bless you, sir. God bless you and your family. That's what Jesus said. This God bless you, shalom, shalom. He said that I will either confess you or deny you, depending on whether you confessed me or denied me. The moment you close your eyes for the last time and you come before God, you are on your own. Nobody will answer anything for you. Your parents are not going to speak for you. Your dad is not going to speak for you when you die and come before God. When you die and come before God, your mom is not going to speak for you. Your prophet is not going to speak for you. Your pastor is not going to speak for you. Your mentor is not going to speak for you. Nobody will speak for you but you. And the question that God will have for you is, what did you do with my son Jesus? <laughs>